Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Kayla. Fellas! 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 How are we doing on this fine, thirsty Thursday? Caleb. Thirsty for sure, but I'm always one with a thirst for quenching. So, Gio, how are you? Oh, uh, you know, just getting this lighter filled up so I can light up this cigar. But it's been a long time. But Gio said that he ordered a lighter. The mystery of the lighter. It's a mystery. We'll we'll unveil it for you guys. I, I will. You don't have to pay for it on the after. Her. It may just show up on the down her podcast. Um. <laughs> Listen, we uh we got a lot to get to in not a lot of time. Uh, we have a guest joining us at some point. We'll uh we'll get a little into that, but uh, Gio, uh, what are we smoking today, brother? So, like, what are we getting into? What's well, up, brother? I think that given what we have here, it'll probably be pretty obvious we'll, who our guest will be shortly. But we are smoking the new Coronetta Habano from Crown Heads. Oh. Now, very interesting. Little foreshadowing. Typically, when we have a Crowned Heads product on the show, it's one of two people joining us. Hmm. Will it be the man, the myth, the legend, Huber himself, do you or think, will it be? Crazy do you think Jake? that anybody might have just read the the bio when they <laughs> clicked on the episode, Gio? Absolutely not. <laughs> or is he the, or is so he you the think it's really going to be a mystery? You, how many people do you think actually read the bio? I think a lot because uh, clearly, like some episodes do better than others. Or the, thum- or the thumbnail picture. Yeah, that, the that, thumbnail that is, picture. That is fair. Yeah, yeah. like There's, some episodes do way better than others. Yeah, you tell, I mean, tell me mm-hmm. I'm wrong. You're, no, you're uh, not. Scroll through, find out. Fucking our skip episodes killing it right now. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, uh, do you want to talk about the cigar? So, I mean, obviously now you get the cat's out of the bag because you know you guys read the bio. <laughs> But uh, we will be joined shortly by Mr. John Huber himself to talk about this. Uh, this cigar actually came out two different blends, two different factories. A lot going on with it here. Sounds like an ergonomical nightmare. Oh, my goodness. I can only imagine. So I'll talk about the Habano that we are smoking here. So pretty easy to describe here. It is... Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, and then Nicaraguan binder and filler. Uh, This is out of the Nazca factory, whereas the other one is out of, I believe, the E.P. Carrillo factory, the Maduro. E.P. Carrillo. Mm -hmm. But that is what we got there. Uh, Traditional Robusto size, if I'm correct here. It looks like a 5x54. We'll confirm that in a second here. Is this the Earl size that we're smoking, or is it like... Uh, you know, it didn't say it on the wrapper. That's the only thing that... So we got these at... There's a couple different sizes, yeah. Yeah, so there's either the Duke or the Earl. Jerry, you're usually good at estimating this stuff. So the Duke is 5.5 by 54. The Earl is 5 and a half by 52. This is 5 by 52. Okay. This is 52 ring gauge. So we got the Earl then. Yeah, ah. the, that's the Robusto. I was going to say, I like the measurement right there. You just eyeballed it. You got, you know. Listen, I, I trust Jerry no, with I get a lot it. of things. He's, the, he's a man of many cigars without the eight to ten years of experience. But he you know. smoked enough. Thank you, Caleb. In two I, to three years I, to gain that amount of experience. I appreciate yeah. all, all the nice things you have to say. So you said the five by 52? Yeah. So then this is the Earl. Um, yes. Quick question. Uh, what are we pairing this with? I'm glad you asked because something new, uh, something a little harsh, very heavy for a Thursday day herf. We have Cooper and Cask, uh, limited edition release. This is a small batch series, Kentucky whiskey, uh, aged 13 years, finished in Armagnac cask. Um, this is 65.8 proof. So that is bringing you to uh, 131.6 proof. This is from Kentucky, USA, bottled February 2024, uh, aged 13 years. So. Uh, this brand, Cooper and Cast, they do a lot of single barrel specialties. So this is coming from a a batch. So this isn't a, exactly a single barrel, but it's the fourth release of a small batch series. Obviously, we have uh, batch number four. It is a 51% corn mash. Uh, it doesn't say what the other 49% is. And, and it's not aged entirely in new charred oak barrels. They did that on purpose so that uh, 
it added more flavor and grace with a heavy charred oak presence. Uh, limited release, they only did 1,400 bottles of this stuff. So kind of on the rare side, if you spread 1,400 bottles out throughout the whole world, United States. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's a new new brand, new bottle. Got some age. They do get a lot of their products from, they say, Colorado, Indiana, and um, where else? Colorado, Indiana. They're all over the place, kind of. But it's, you know, they, they keep everything slightly unnoticed. New brand, saw it, and I was like, ah, Armagnac, let's give it a try. We like that. So I know upon initial tasting, you guys, a little harsh, right? Uh, The first sip I had, I was like, God damn, this is like gasoline, dude. But then uh, it really calms down after you, you kind of get used to it. I agree. It does. The first sip, it definitely took me for a, a wild ride. I was like, <clears throat> gas me a little bit, but... That's all right. They, they're very special for their single barrels. They do a lot of store picks nationwide. Mm. Um, but their small batch series, uh, their small batch series does a limited edition releases showcasing the art of blending, batching, and cast finishing. So they only do probably less than 2,000 bottles per release of this. Uh, very limited stuff. And they do source from Indiana, Kentucky, Canada as well, and Colorado. So Canada. So some Canadian blends might be in here as well. You so. think this uh, this is some MGP? I'm going to guess, yeah, from Indiana. They say that right there. Uh, Colorado is interesting, but the Canada is pretty interesting because they don't have to disclose the mash bill there. So maybe when they say 51% corn, if this has got a Canadian blend, you're not going to know. But there's definitely some rye in this. I could tell. Yeah. A little bit spicy. Yeah. I will say I don't really taste the Armagnac that much. You know? Not yet. I don't know. Not as strong as the last couple of Armagnacs that we've done. What was the last one? The, uh... Bardstown. Yes. Caleb, toss me your lighter here. This thing decides to... Doesn't like me. What do you guys want to do for the next... God only knows. I mean... There's a lot to talk about. Well, maybe we do this a little bit reverse order on things here. We get into... uh, We take care of our segment stuff beforehand, and then... Are yeah. you saying change the whole show? We could before think. getting drunk. <laughs> yes. I don't know how I feel about this. I was gonna say it. Maybe a reversal <clears throat> is what we do. We Tarantino the show. Oh, we start from one whole thing. It's, yeah, it's start at the end, that. at the beginning. Wow. Just not wow. the cigar review. <laughs> That'd be amazing. of course not the cigar review. You can't you can't start off that way. What um? That would be a crazy episode. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we're gonna give you the review and then at the end of the show we're gonna light it. We just play the whole show back. We just play the whole show backwards. That would th- that's uh, like an April Fool's Day prank next year or something like that. Mm, I don't know. Uh should we do a little news with the scene? Caleb, let's yeah, break let's it out. The news. Do you want to talk about the sponsors of the show? Yeah, I mean yeah. Well, well our sponsor should be here right now. John. <laughs> we'll give you a little hard time on that one here. But this episode of the Down to Herf Bot Pro. Eh, well, this episode. Hold on, restart. Yeah. Restart. <laughs> get get some clarity here. Some yeah. Zen. Sorry. I so can't... you've gone way too far ahead. Yeah. Stop getting drunk. Come back and sober it up. A, it was the one thirty. <laughs> you sober up. Okay. All right. This portion of the show is brought to you by our sponsors, Crowned Heads, makers of fine cigars like La Varetta, Coronetta, and Mildias. Be sure to check them out at a retailer near you. Should we talk about the new blood medicine being brought to to I the market? We absolutely, should we should talk about that? Yeah, we're blood. talking about it. But yeah, it's good for man or beast. But yes, blood medicine new or man bear pig, man bear pig, man bear pig. It'll work on him too. Yeah, blood medicine. The next one coming out. Uh, sh- I think they said at the like the end of the month in the oh. post. We'll have to confirm that when John pops on. But I mean. I'm a big fan of those event packs. I've got a few of them stashed away. You stashed yours away? I actually smoked all of mine. <laughs> Every single blood medicine I've had, I've smoked them all. <laughs> what an absolute disgrace. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, They're not meant to be smoked. They're meant to be stored. Yes. Forever. I smoke and them look all. that. Like trophies. I smoke them all, baby. Jer- Jerry actually, all. you know, sometimes when he gets a little bored and he's home alone, he'll go to the big cooler. He's, got, he's like, yeah, it's my precious. <laughs> just look at <laughs> just it. Just look at it. Cranking just, one just out. Look at it. Just, Would you just look at it? You got to reorganize and be like, nah, I got to move these up here. These, got, these go back down. Look at it. You should. Yeah, you, look right at it. They're your look. babies. Would, I you, mean, would you look at that? Just look at it. You got a. Uh, 
Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You almost get... You were doing some trophy hunting earlier. What? I saw. What? Uh, your boy from Sir Louis posted one of your unicorns, and I saw that message you were sending. Look, man, I lowballed him a little bit. <laughs> I was just... Let's get real here. This is a down economy. I'm trying to make a buck. You know, I'm trying... I'm, I'm not trying to make a buck. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get something at a cheaper price than it should be bought at. I'm trying to make a buck fifty, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You got to double it in half and then uh, taxes and stuff. I guess let's just get into the news with Caleb this early. I did send I did send you that new clip. We want to start off with that one first? Uh, sure. All right, we got Definition Cigars are shipping out a new Gen 413 Lancero and Toro. So Definition Cigars, a brand we haven't done yet, they're introducing a 7x42 Vitola with an MSRP of seven, uh, 1370 and then a Toro, a 6x52 Vitola, that is going to be 1380 Uh New sizes are going to be regular production from uh, Definition Cigars. They're going to be packaged in 20-count boxes, uh, while the Lancero will be sold in 30-count boxes. So, uh... A little bit different there. They actually debuted last year at 2023 PCA trade show. Uh, you're going to have an Ecuadorian broadleaf hybrid wrapper covering a Mexican San Andreas binder and Nicaraguan fillers grown in Condega, Otempe, and Pueblo Nueva. So uh, celebrating a collaboration with Luciano. So they're doing a collaboration right there, those two brands. Uh, Tabacaleros SA it's, Factory. Uh, Mike Palmer's boy. Yeah, yeah, they got some uh, there's some animosity there. I no, BD, BDP, no BDP, and Luciano. I heard there's going to be a big showdown. No, you guys don't remember what happened. He doesn't even know who Palmer is. He <laughs> took a picture with him at PCA. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's fucking. Everyone's got beef with the BDP, you know. Yeah, man, That's that right. makes sense to me. So, um, it's out of Tabacaleros SA Factory in Esteli, and then. Uh, Another factory in the Mastempe region as well. So uh, they m- linked up through Instagram. They're like, let's do it. And we're going to put this out. Uh, should be shipping to retailers on April 13th. So in two days from now. So Very cool. Very cool. What else we got here, Steenie? Uh, up next, a story very close to my heart because it's one of my favorite brands. We have Cavalier Genevieve is scheduling the Tempora for June. Ooh. So this was something that we actually, when we... We're talking to Sebastian at PCA. This is what exactly what we were smoking. This is exactly <laughs> what he was talking about. Uh, named after a Japanese method of fried food. Hence, you know, tempura. It's funny. And uh, like just like uh, Sebastian said, he's going to be putting it out on the shelves in those uh, big, long boxes. So it's coming in, uh, what have we got? So three sizes. The tempura is going to be the 4 by 60 short perfecto with a pigtail cap. Uh, looks like the Drew Estate Flying Pig. <laughs> But it's it's a little shorter than uh, Cavalier's Vitola, so uh, it would also be offered in the B two Viso Jalapa, uh, the Black two, and the White series line as well. Uh, blend wise, you're looking at uh, entirely Nicaraguan, uh, topped with Jalapa and Habano seed leaves as well. Uh, the Black series uses the Mexican San Andreas wrapper over Nicaraguan Nicaraguan Habano binder and fillers. And the white series is a Habano wrapper over a Connecticut binder and fillers grown in the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Paraguay as well. So a uh, lot of blends right there with the three series. Um, let's see. Uh, they also did the Petite N2s as well, uh, also coming out 2024 as well from Cavalier. So lots of things coming from Cavalier, which uh, I will definitely be smoking and buying for sure. <laughs> little bias there. Big fan. You're going to buy the box? That'll be your second box ever. That's a big box. There's going to be up to how many cigars are in there? Up to twenty five to thirty. That's like a huge shelf yeah, topper. Yeah, but they're short. That's not anything, mm-hmm. dude. They're like little pigs. That's true. Yeah, they're short. We'll see what the price is on that. Probably not bad pricing. They're pretty good with pricing. How many? You said twenty five in a box. You're probably looking at around two fifty. Probably two twenty five is my guess. We'll see. They they're fair with their pricing. I would say. All right. Up next, uh, it's a whiskey story. We have a Kentucky distillery. Influence the union vote with free bottles of bourbon. Uh, the distillery in question, Woodford Bourbon, of course. Nice. So, yeah, we got a little pay for play a little bit. Uh, Woodford Reserve Distillery and the parent company, Brown Foreman, have been ordered and recognized uh, with a bargain to the Teamsters affiliate, where a judge found that the distillery unfairly influenced a 2022 unionization vote by handing out bottles of premium bourbon and doing pay bumps to all their workers. 
So uh, they're committed serious violations of labor law. <coughs> this goes ahead of a vote in November 2022 at the Versailles Distillery. Uh, it was announced across wage changes, uh, changes to merit rate eligibility, vacation policies, and they're giving away bottles of Woodford Reserve Double Oak to all employees. All right before, so it's pretty suspicious, right before a union vote in November of that year. Um, before the free bottles of bourbon were announced and the benefit were announced, a uh, majority of the 60 employees at the distillery were leaning towards authorized unionization. So they wanted to unionize, leaning towards, and then, you know, they started getting these offers from Brown Foreman, Woodford, and they're like, eh, maybe you guys should rethink that uh, unionization. Can you imagine, like, uh, that's like before, like, a big union meeting, right? Geo, right? And they're like, here, man. Maybe don't vote that way, and you like slide them a single dollar. That's what Double <laughs> Oak is in that company. Like it's just, it's not even anything rare. It's just like, but they took it. <laughs> it's like, uh, like Adam Sandler and Happy Gilmore, where he's like, take extra special care of my grandma, and he gives him a single dollar. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I will take care of your grandma for absolutely nothing. Well, up here in New York, we get that sixty dollar ish like Double Oak price over there. It's like thirty dollar. They get it at MSRP. So they're saying managers knew of this practice before the vote. So, and there's also emails going around that they're saying maybe we should give some uh, bottles of bourbon that will exceed unannounced plans for production goals. Uh, the union lost this election the last time they did the vote, so they're like maybe increase production, you get bottles, in wage increases, uh, wage incentives, and this was all everything prior to that vote of November 2022. It's all coming out now. So yeah. There's a Teamster president who said, you know, we already have a couple of union union sites because they have a couple of different bottling plants. So, uh, like, Wild Turkey, Four Roses, a couple of, all over there. Some are unionized, some aren't. Depends on who you got running it. So, they just want to feed their families, make a better living space and stuff like that. That's what the union president says. Brown Foreman says that all this is unrelated to the organization campaign and the pending election. Uh, they're going to have another election this month of April right now, coming up in 2024. So, yeah, they're fighting this lawsuit that's going on. They want to review administrative law and changes in the ruling. See what happens, but it's uh, it's kind of funny. They're, they're saying that they, it's not like they haven't gifted bottles before in the past and that this hasn't been like a practice for years without the company. I mean, honestly, if as long as they're not a union, that's a win for Woodford. Like, you got to do what you got to do. Big dubs. Now, granted, I don't know. I am actually a union member, but there are certain industries I don't believe should be unionized, like the barista union. Well, there's a big difference. I love what uh, what Starbucks did, where they were just like, you know what? Close it. Just shut it down. Who gives a or fuck? like uh, Spot Coffee, like when they unionized and a lot of these places started shutting down. Like, that's happened. Um, cause, so they say this is in Versailles bottling plant but then they have a louisville bottling plant so the louis one is unionized the versailles isn't yet and that's what the vote was influencing and that's why there's a lot of controversy uh, again up for vote this april but a lot of these uh guys from brown foreman are saying that there's this uh toyota plant that's in georgetown and they're saying that the united auto workers union has been targeting these distilleries to unionize so they're saying Yes, we, you know, they're kind of emitting in emails and it's all out there in emails that they, you know, wage incentives, uh, the free bottles. But they're saying that the, the auto unions are trying to influence these distilleries to unionize. So that's why they're like, well, this isn't it's not all like it's not all bad on our end because they got these auto guys coming in on our business. So they're doing shit, too. I don't I don't like that. Big Like uh, Geo said, and you guys like not everybody should unionize, you know. I agree. But. but- that's yeah. what we got for the news. <laughs> so, like, on some, like, sadder news, I mean, it could be sad for some, not for others. Uh, we we uh, we lost O.J. Simpson today. So the uh, juice is no longer loose? He's not. Uh, I brought this picture up of his last ride. Uh, in a, in a it's, the, it's the Bronco hearse. Bronco hearse. Oh. Yeah, O.J.'s the, last ride. Dude, the internet's hard. quick with that. That was fast. That's quick. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's probably the easiest Photoshop they've had to do in a while. <laughs> but... Dude, what is it? Pancreatic cancer or no? Uh, uh, prostate. Uh, prostate cancer. Sorry, not Something pancreatic. Like that. Yeah. They didn't specify exactly, but there was speculation because it was very abrupt, like the short passing. But abrupt wouldn't it wouldn't be 
prostate like prostate really is like a slow growing cancer isn't it i think it's just one of the ones that like didn't know until it was too late well i think a thing with prostate cancer is this like they say every man will get it at some point if you live long enough secondly to that i think really it's one of those ones where like it's very treatable and most of the time curable if you're willing to have the operation that it requires which gives you like a 50 percent chance of never getting a boner again so a lot of men opt out of the surgery uh, Wait, if you do the prostate exam, it like not the exam, no. the, the, surgery. Sur- the surgery. Really? Like if they remove it, you sometimes can't. Oh. You, it's like it can fucking give you like really bad ED. Re- oh yeah, because they say the now, prostate is like the male G spot, something like that. I don't. Now, not, does I don't it know. still not work? Like if you pop the blue bombers? I I don't know. I know you're not blowing loads anymore. Well, I mean, stuff comes out, but it's just not thick. No, this isn't a vasectomy, dude. That's not oh. it's not the vast deference oh, that they're cutting. This know. is the prostate. This is like literally this is what separates like your bladder and your fucking your nuts, dude. Oh. So like when the, when you get like so the epididymis, I'm pretty sure is still intact. The what? Is is still intact. <laughs> if you when, guys it, don't know, Jerry researches everything to its fault. So I'm pretty sure if you when you get a vasectomy all they're cutting is the vast deference, which is the 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 uh, the tube that goes from your nuts into the prostate, which makes you, which is where the fucking actual sperm comes from. I know it sounds fucking weird that I know all this, but I mean, you should probably know that if you're a guy. But the epididymis is just like the the other like cord that connects your fucking nuts to whatever that I don't know. It's a whole thing, but like apparently, if you get prostate cancer, it's not good. I mean, you, you got like a 50% chance of never getting a fucking boner again. Oh, and that's yeah. why guys don't fucking get the surgery. Jeez, what does that surgery entail? Holy shit. Fucking Removal of your prostate. So the doctor's like... I'm just going to drink. Cheers, everybody. That's what hey, I'm saying, dude. there he is. Well, this actually works. This perfect is uh, this is a perfect time, actually. This is a great for time. <laughs> Talking about uh, prostate said, exams. He said, for what? <laughs> I'm late to the party, man. I'm just yeah, to we started to talking about O.J. Simpson having uh, prostate cancer. And he passed. He, he did pass. He 76. passed, yeah. O.J.'s last I actually, ride. I met him. I met him once at a USC football game. Solid dude. I mean, at that time, I was just like, couldn't be nicer. Him and Marcus Allen were both so nice to me. Super nice guys. So was this pre- Trial or post? Yes, yes. Okay. Pre, pre. So he was the running back pre. at that point. He wasn't the murderer. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was, he was, he was already retired from the NFL and all Okay. That. Well, for those this wondering, prob- this voice this that just popped up, this is John Huber. Crown head <laughs> cigars. People hey, are like, who's this never, fourth man. person? <laughs> I'm, I'm better late than never. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Person. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome to the show, man. We kind of just started and Thank we, we kind of got right into it. What's going on, man? Oh, it's a crazy day. Crazy. We had a storm come through last night, and I guess I don't know if we got hit with lightning or whatever, but some of my outlets were out, so I was trying to get an electrician to come over. So I got Derek over here working in the other room with the circuit breaker, and I'm trying to jump on, do time with you guys. And Jerry, I know you got a hard stop like in 45 minutes, and I do too. I do you honestly daughter, know what so. I'm doing? Like, this is actually like, it's actually fucked up. I shouldn't go. I'm what? going to look at an what? SRT Hellcat. That's your hard stop because you're gonna do that. Because I, I think I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go look at a seventy thousand dollar car that I don't need. Oh my god! So me, me, and, me and my wife are gonna go and test drive it, and because we want a summer she's car. She's actually letting she's actually letting you do this. this I was crazy. going to get. Uh, I was also looking back into. I used to ride motorcycles, and I'm like, I think I'm hitting like a midlife crisis. Uh, I need something fun. <laughs> And uh, besides all this, besides yeah. this, besides I need this. something fun. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man, I really love to get another crotch rocket. She's like, you said you wanted that Hellcat, right? Let's go look at one. And she doesn't want me to get a Ducati. Safety first. No, I got rid of it. No. I had one like I had an R6 for a long I, time and then I got rid of it. And man, they're dangerous. I, I had but, that. I had the uh, the fever for bikes a long time ago. I lived in L.A. before the helmet law. And then they passed the helmet law and that kind of killed the buzz for me. But. Used to like borrow friends' Harleys and stuff and ride up Laurel Canyon and then up the coast PCH, go to Neptune's Net in Malibu. I uh, loved it. I was that close to actually buying one. But dude, I'm telling that you, ship man, is left, there is bro. nothing is... more wild no, I, than I, being I, on a motorcycle, man. Do you ever feel more free no. than that? No, it's, it's awesome. crazy. I, the rush I, you get. There's no way. 
I I got too much responsibility right now to to, to even fathom doing something like that. I shouldn't even be going yeah. to this car appointment, but no, you shouldn't. So let's just keep it on the pod. But I gotta <laughs> leave at three thirty. I got I actually have to go pick up my daughter from school. So no, that's yeah. fine, man. Yeah. We get it. But man, I I was looking forward to this. I was, the whole idea behind this was we were gonna get together. We we're gonna smoke the cornet on the show together. We are uh, and then, currently smoking it. And then, yeah, I'm glad you guys are because obviously I'm not. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm home instead of at the office. And two, there's no more at the office. So when we left Vegas, I thought we were going to have all these samples coming back. And apparently what had happened was um, the, the day I left, all the guys went to the booth. Like, like I heard Jake had a suitcase, like a spare suitcase. And he just went, <laughs> and, he just went <laughs> and so when I'm coming back to Nashville, I'm thinking, oh, we have more samples coming back. And then I found out yeah, no cigars are coming back at all. So I was like, ah, okay. So I think we had like a box of Maduros that were like on display that came back and someone's over, you know, carry on or whatever. And those are gone. So I have no cigars. I have no office. I have to live vicariously through you. Nice. Well, so with the now you said it was Coronetta. Did I say it right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, you yes. should know this. Are you oh, fucking around right no, now? I didn't want to. I didn't, didn't want to. No, I, I didn't want to miss. I, I thought he was fucking around. Because you said it differently. Oh, it's so easy. It's coronet with an A. Right. Coronetta. It's, so, Coron- it's I, Coronetta. derived Coronetta. from the word said- coronet, which was a crown run, worn by lower ranks. Of British heraldry back in the 16th and 17th century. Well, there's Hence a story. The Earl, Duke, Baron, and the the little crown thing on the side. That's those are the strawberry leaves that were actually on these crowns that I'm referencing. That's and, your backstory. And that's how you. Commercial. And that's how you answer a question without a question even being asked. So thank yes. you, John. That's perfect because I had that written down and right away got right to it. So right, Gio, I want to spell cat. I'm going to solve the puzzle. Is there a vowel? <laughs> 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 Coronetta, is that how you pronounce it? I love that. Anyway, I'm just busting balls. I, hey, yeah. listen, you know, How's if anyone's smoking? earned it, it's me. You know, this is that's still payback from the uh, uh, cigar aficionado thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, now this yeah. release, obviously, mm-hmm. big difference. Two different factories, two different blends. Essentially, how did that idea come about? Uh the Habano version was actually done in spring of 22. Okay. Um, everything, art, blend, Vitola's packaging, all that finished in spring of 22. Um, and then we'd made the decision internally that we didn't want to release La Varetta and Cornetta at the same time. So we said, okay, let's just, you know, table Cornetta and we'll focus on Varetta in 23, which we did. Um, and then I'm like, Shoot. Oh, the show's in March. I'm fine, man. I got the dishes done on that already. I'm way ahead of everybody. I'm like, let's go. And then later in the year, in 23, uh, my business partner, Mike Condor, says, hey, uh, is there something else we could do with Ernie's factory, you know, Ernesto Perez Carrillo? Can we do something with their factory that won't compete or cannibalize Coronetta that we can add to the show? And I'm like, Christ, here we go. You know, like last minute. And um, so I said, yeah, so we can do a, a, a Maduro version. And I can start working on a blend with Ernie now. He said, okay, go ahead. So I went from like being way ahead of the game to being like last minute, kind of like I got to hustle this thing through. And oh, okay. Ernie and I spent, spent a good good amount of time on the on the blend. Um, that was the hardest part. Packaging, obviously, was just a riff on the, the Cornet album. Yeah. So that's how that? it all came back. You ever see that uh, Kobe Bryant and uh, Kevin Hart commercial where he's like, more. I no, need that more. Was Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Yeah, I need more. I need uh-huh. more. That's, no. that's like my mic to you. I so, need more. Yeah. I need more. It's not enough. Yeah. How much is more? Exactly. Oh, see, that, Just more. The comparison yeah. I was going to make, that's like me asking Jerry if he can do something post-editing. Jerry thinks he's done. Hey, can you add this? You son of a I get, bitch. Listen, I, <laughs> behind the scenes, I get that all the time. It's like, you know, hey, is there something we can do? You got anything in your, you know, wheelhouse for Q1 that we can add to the mix? To the mix? It's always to the mix. Oh, yeah, let me just pull that right out of my butt, and we'll just go ahead and put that in production. Let's go, <laughs> you know? And so I get that a lot. I'm used to it after doing it for 12 years. So 
John, you said <clears throat> you started this like in 2022. How did you keep this mm-hmm. under wraps and a secret? Because I Bro, feel like it was not. I can tell he you how he didn't tell Gio about it. Oh yeah, we talked. We talked. We <laughs> joked about this. He didn't tell Gio about it. That's how he was able to keep it under wraps. John, only a few people. A, a few people have smoked it, um, but they didn't know what it was. And I didn't tell them I was kind of seed the samples out a little bit. And I remember um, Miguel Montanez, my broker in the Northeast, um, great guy. He uh, he smoked it and he calls me up. He's like, "Bro, this. What is this? What is this?" And I'm like. You, did you smoke it? Did you like it? He's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. He, and uh, I said, yeah, it's, it's not bad, right? And he said, it's a Mildeus killer, is what he said. He goes, this is going to crush Mildeus. And I, that's not exactly what you want to hear, um, <laughs> but it's it's a compliment. I took it as a compliment. So a few people, and Jake had been one of the people that I had let smoke it early on, too. So, but it was hard for me because I really believed in that blend, the Habano in particular. Um and I just was really like excited to get it out. And then when somebody says, no, you can't, you got to hold on to this for another year. And it's, it's tough. You know? Well, we were joking but, about this because like the news of this, the like, Coronetta came out like right before PCA and we met up, mm-hmm. we had our little show and we're like, how did we not know about this? What a secret. And they're like, we, we played out this little like role play in our head. We're like, uh, it was John, Miguel, Jake, everyone at uh, like your meeting that you had like last month. It's like, yeah, we got this yeah. new blend coming out right before PCA. We're hosting. We're doing this. Let's just not tell the down to herf guys. <laughs> Make sure you don't tell Gio. It's like because like it came, the news came and we were like amazed. Like how is this possible? It's awesome. All of our our guys found out pretty much at that sales meeting. We did like the little presentation. I mean, they'd heard we were doing a release, obviously for the show, but in that week long sales meeting, it's like then they got to see the packaging and then the backstory and then smoke the actual samples. <laughs> So one day we, we smoked just the Habano and the next day we smoked just the Maduro and they just took every Habano sample I had left over. It was, it was gone by the end of the week. I mean, they just ran through them. So that looked like a fun sales meeting. Uh, it looked like, did you guys go curling? I didn't. The guys did. It was more of that, you know, that team building kind of stuff. I don't yeah. didn't do that. You didn't go curling? Yeah, they went, they went, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I did the, <laughs> I did the meetings and, um, and the dinner, but I didn't do any of the fun stuff. All right, if you would have curled, one night, who one would night they went out drinking, one night they went curling, and you know, whatever. If you would have went curling, who would have you picked as your partner? I don't know the first thing about curling, so I don't know who I would, how to even judge that. You know what I mean? It's like shuffleboard um, on ice. You're looking at a mask. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. it's like essentially shuffleboard. Well, I mean, you, you know most of the guys in our team. We're not talking about any kind of, you know, Four and five star recruit athletes. <laughs> I mean, Jake might have been at one point. Jake would just shovel those things right, right into the next field. He would just shovel them off. You the know, field. too much but, power. I mean, Damn. Oh shit, that's uh, funny. I feel like uh, again. How how is this cigar smoking? I'm kind of dying to know because. Oh, uh, this thing is good, man. This uh, is yeah, uh, nice ash. I think this is the Earl that we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. The uh, what is it? Five and yeah. a half by fifty two. 54 bingo yep. got it this is yeah. my it didn't say on the on the wrapper but uh they were trying to figure out if it was the duke or the earl because it didn't say on the, the duke the duke is a 54 well i looked at it i was like this is not 54 so this is definitely no, the Earl. i think it was five, we did 552 five and a half 54 and then uh 656 it's a big boy yeah. Well, this is my. Yeah, you know, M- Miguel keeps poking me for the bigger cigars. He's like, he wants something that they can sell, and I'm, that's not my jam. I don't really like that. I, I, I don't like the Gordos. Before, I but. think this is a great question for you, actually. What is if what is your absolute go to size in a cigar? Five five eighths by forty six. Corona. Yeah, man. Corona yeah. Gordo. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. I love that's like been my favorite size since before Crown Heads. I mean, I just love that. It's like the perfect size. Yeah, man. Um, you just, it, I'm not. I'm not a big ring gauge guy. I never have been. But recently, I've been pushed internally more and more in that direction for for sales purposes. And I mean, Miguel was for years hounding me for a six by sixty, and I and we hired Miguel in seventeen, and he, he kept saying, "Oh, we need to have a six by sixty. I can, we can sell so many of these." And I'm like, I know my customer. And I, I don't think that the guy that smokes Crown Heads is a, is a six sixty guy. So one day, one year, I don't know if it was 19, 18, whatever, I finally said, okay, I'll tell you what, you pick the blend and we'll go ahead and do it as an, as an LE 
And if it gets traction, we can add it to, to the brand. And he said, okay, let's go. So he picked Luminosa, which is like this mild, medium kind of Connecticut, Ecuador thing. Good cigar, especially in the Petit Corona. And we called it the uh, Luminosa Gigante. <clears throat> I'll never forget. We ended up like sitting on pallets of this thing. It would not move. We took it to the trade show, came back. We still had pallets and pallets of this. And I, I kept saying, sending him pictures of these pallets. I'm like, you don't get rid of these. I'm going to send them to your house. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so that was like an epic fail. So I, I kind of refrained from that. So, so it's funny we we you you kind of talk on like big ring gauge and like you know retailers and stuff and like people some guys really like the bigger ring gauges uh mm-hmm. like, like my buddy adam he has a uh like a store here in buffalo and he always tells me that the guys that are like his most regular customers they like like the six by sixties they like the crazy big ring gauges and i'm like that is so crazy to me because like that is not really like my jam that's oh, not it not mine either it's well, just it's such a long cigar either. Well, I got a question. It's just, yeah. Is that more of like an, I don't want to say older, but like, is that like an old school thing? Like the bigger the ring gauge, the bigger the size, the longest cigar. Is that like an old school type of thing? I mean, I remember when that first came into prominence, it was um, Ernie kind of started it with um, La Gloria Cubana Siri E, not Siri E, what was it? I can't remember, but it was like, it was aimed at this large ring gauge segment. And, um, at that time, like a 660 was unheard of. So that kind of it gained momentum. And I remember at CAO, we did, <clears throat> we did some cigars from 660 and that they sold very, sold very well. So what used to be like an abnormal size is now kind of like one of the most common size in retail. I mean, it yeah. used to be like, you know, Robusto and, and Toro, but now it's like <clears throat> Robusto, Toro and Gordo, which is, they call six by 60. Yeah. So I don't know. But I just think it's a different customer, man, to me. It's it's that guy that wants value for dollar. <clears throat> it's that guy that will Consider. put that thing down in his ashtray and then come back the next day and relight <laughs> the thing and keep smoking it. Good point. You know what I mean? It's not. It's a different guy. Yeah. I don't know. I when I first so started smoking me. cigars, that was me. I was like, <laughs> well, for a dollar more, I can get a really? cigar that's two times the size. Yeah. It's I like mean, look I'm at, getting um, more tobacco, but then like you smoke the cigar and it's like not even close to the <clears> same experience. You know, yeah. you're, you're, uh, you know, a bigger cigar. It's a, <coughs> it's a, uh, Sorry. you know, a slower smoking cigar. It, it takes more time. It takes more effort. You know, it takes more attention. <coughs> uh, you know, and you get into these like Corona Gordas, Robustos. They don't, they don't take as much, you know, when you can get, you can kind of just yeah. sit there and enjoy them over an hour and 15, an hour and a half. And that's it. <laughs> then you got the nuts that are making this. It's probably a good thing. I'm not smoking today. No, I feel you, man. It's between between you and Geo. It's like Dude, a fuck. I'm, so I, I'm in the clinic right now. Well, you know. Oh my god, bro. Not I that mean, my wife is in bed right now at the other side of the house. She's like got the worst sinus infection. She was sick for like. We good? We good, Derek? Okay, what the guys, hell? can I, you gonna edit this out or is this? Can you, we pause it? Give me a second. Give it some amongst yourselves. I'll, I'll mute my mic. Yeah, that's so fine. Derek no here for a second. Yeah, that's all good. Mute. <clears throat> all right i'll be right back all right i i gotta say well that s- thumbs up thing was crazy what was that i don't know i didn't see that was a thing <laughs> oh that fl- the uh, bubble there, there's like little emojis that pop up through the uh th- you can get some emojis that pop up i gotta say very light creamy cigar what do you guys think so far uh so far so good yeah uh, it's light definitely for sure uh i didn't smoke this at the show i only did the Maduros, and I smoked like two or three of them while we were there because I got a couple extra samples every time I went back. Yeah, they were generous to us at the show. Yeah, we know some peeps. Yeah. When he gets back, I definitely want to talk about that, though, our experience where we didn't talk anything cigar-related because I feel like that was probably one of the highlights of PCA. It was the most relaxed I was there at the show. I think you feel the same way, Jer. I was just hungover yeah. the whole time. I just the, the whole show was a hangover. That's Vegas, I, baby. That's dude, Vegas. That's Vegas. That's baby. Vegas, dude. I just talked to my barber. He's like, dude, Vegas. He's like, I take a couple grand with me. He's like, I don't care. Kiss if my, goodbye. He's like, I don't care if my boys don't want to get fucked up or not. He's like, I am. He's like, I'm gonna have the time of my life. He's like, I don't care what anyone else wants to do. I'm doing me. It's Vegas. 
Yes. Are you talking about Adam? Yeah, Adam. Yeah, Adam. He's a nut. Yeah, he he is a... Not our boy Adam. He's a wild man. My barber Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a wild man. So, I won't lie, Jared. I was, like, slightly concerned with you during the fucking show. I'm going to go to Uncle Nearest. Oh, okay, Jared. I'll see you in five minutes. (laughs) I I took, like, uh, I took the hair of the dog very serious. And then I had a couple shots, and I was like, yeah, baby, we back. I wonder if that was, like... A different effect because I've seen you beard beard hair of the dog. It's like you're a normal functioning person. Whiskey hair of the dog, game changer. I am uh one sleep deprived, jet lagged, uh hungover, um no energy drinks that were good. We ran out of C four. Uh yeah. rock stars are cutting it. Sorry, no offense to Rockstar, but like that's all they had at the show floor. They Ugh. had some monsters. Oh, on the show floor? Yeah. I know our hotel had him, but the show floor had just had rock stars. I was like, I can't even do a sugar free one, man. That's not the same. I know we were in bad shape when Gio and I looked at the fucking mini bar at the hotel and we were like, all right, dude, how much is it? And then we looked, we're like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I was on I was on the phone with uh with my wife. It was like she was like for a while. She's like, No, no, go down the elevator and go into the lobby. What's wrong with you idiots? And it was literally like eight dollars cheaper. Yeah, that was that was key. The lobby beer slapped. Lobby beers on the casino floor slapped. They were great. pro tip for Vegas. The gift shop beer is cheaper than the bar beer and you can still bring it anywhere. Pro tip. That's live in Vegas, baby. Uh-huh. Balling on a budget. <laughs> Seriously, though, I with this cigar going back to it, I enjoyed the Maduro like at the show. But Habano like slaps differently. Like for a day here, I think this is a. A good thing to do midday. Like, uh, no problem starting your day off even smoking this for breakfast. Like, you got a good start right there. Don't skip breakfast, just smoke this for breakfast. Uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it a European breakfast. We'd call this like a Central American breakfast, perhaps. What's the uh, What's the old... Uh, hold on. I think I got him muted. You're back. He's You're back? back? Gio, good job, man. That's the old-, the old log off and log back in. It never fails. Yeah. Uh, where did we leave off? <laughs> so we yeah, I don't even know, man. I forgot. I, this is pretty pretty uh, sloppy for being your title sponsor, I guess, but whatever. There we go. We still love you, John. I love you guys, too. Man. It was good seeing you in Vegas, by the way. So that was actually what we were going to talk about. Yeah, that, we were going to bring that. Okay. There you go. You, you jog the memory <laughs> of uh, old Caleb here. I'm old, man. I got to say, so one of the highlights of PCA for me was honestly when we just sat mm-hmm. down and had a cigar for an hour and didn't talk about fucking cigars at all. Cause that day of the show, we were fucking fried at that point. Like, was that when we talked about the whole, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <That's it. laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> that was fun. That was fun. That was story, <laughs> now that's how you get to know your sponsor and that's how you get to that's know your friends. Story. That's how you yeah. get to know people bonding, oh, bonding like that. Oh, like that's like talking to your, uh, uh, that like, was talking to Uncle John. Exactly. That's talking to Uncle, <laughs> Uncle John. John. That's talking to Uncle John. You cool uncle. We'll just we'll just we'll keep that incognito. Absolutely. So. <laughs> All right. I think we've already said too much. I mean, that day was crazy because we did hella interviews. We didn't even eat lunch that day. So just to sit down and have a chance to just talk shit with you. Do nothing. Yeah, just to have a little break, just to <clears> talk <throat> nothing but interviews, cigars, just chill. Uh, unlike, uh, that's that's um, that's um, the my favorite part of that show to be honest with you is you know not necessarily what i don't particularly care for is when somebody comes to the booth and you got five minutes they throw the mic on you and they go okay you know what is it rapper binder filler tell us about your new thing and it's like hi i'm john here from pca 2024 crown heads booth but i just hate that i really i just rather have a conversation like you know what i mean that's and just shoot just shoot it now that's reply. one thing that for all for our sponsors and the company that we're with, we did not interview or, sh- or do any sort of that stuff with those, like guys like you. So that's one thing I liked about the show that we that we did or didn't do because it's, right. it's different. You get to spend time, enjoy, meet yeah. you know, yeah, meet face to face because I never met you face to face. So it's like and anyone there because I never went to PCA. So it's actually more enjoyable than interviewing them on the spot, like you said, microphone in your face, camera in your face. Hold on one second. Yeah, you were the <laughs> this thumbs up emoji. Okay. Wait, we're leaving you, that in. <laughs> wait, if you do a thumbs up, does it just pop up and go away? I don't know okay, what that so is. All the lights. Hold on, does it do it on mine? Derek, thank oh. you so much. I thought it was. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. 
I'm trying yes, to play sir. with it. I don't Appreciate know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen it happen before when we do stuff. Yeah. But. So, John, it's really funny right yeah. now. When you do a thumbs up, this like thumbs up bubble pops up on your screen and it's hilarious. When did I do a thumbs up? Like just a second ago. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you good? All oh, right. Now <laughs> I was just like, like and it pops oh, up. Oh, now it's not doing oh, it. Of course. It did it twice. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, I, never I, seen it. It. I never seen that feature. <laughs> Gestures. Oh, my man's got to reach into that wall. Yeah, you know, <laughs> The show, I know how to get somebody paid. Um, I, for the show is different, man, for me. I mean, I've done this show every year since 96, except for um, 2000, because my son was born that year. Um, and ironically, AJ, our daughter, was born during the trade show in 2015 in New Orleans. So she's a trade show baby. So she's, we usually celebrate her birthday like in Vegas, like AJ's been to Vegas like eight times or whatever. But anyway, the point of me saying all this is that it was so different to be there in March as opposed to July. Cause every year that I've done it, it's always been in July and I much prefer it in July. I mean, from, a, from our side of the fence, I think it was a huge mistake to, to move that show to March. Huge. All right, well, that goes into a question I had for you. How was it hosting and doing the whole, you know, you just bring in March, was it different, you prefer July, but how was it hosting and then putting out these new cigars and getting them in packaging? So how was that for you? Hosting in terms of like that reception? Exactly, that yeah. The pre-party. The pre-party. I, you know what, if I, if I had, I wasn't really that involved with it, to be honest with you. Um, I just kind of like approved a couple of design elements of it and the other people kind of took care of the planning and the, the stuff. But if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't. And for my vote, I wouldn't vote to do it again. Because when I came home, I started, you know, I was in the office, started listening to a lot of recaps from these bloggers talking about what they thought of the show. And, man, you'd be surprised how many people were just like, that was the worst party ever. I didn't like the nachos. And the nachos, and they were, I'm like, I wanted to, like, get on there, like, if it hadn't been taped and just say, hey, you know what? Why don't you write the five-figure check? And why don't you do it better if you don't like it? You do it. You know what I mean? Just the in the level of ingratefulness. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, there were enough bars, but, you know, I didn't like the food. The nachos weren't that good. You know, it's just just the worst party ever. I just I just didn't like it at all. I'm like, fucking next time, don't come. You know, I just, I don't know. It really kind of put me the wrong way. People are just so, especially the blogger kind of, no, you guys are not included in that, that thing, but there's a group of people that just, I think they think their their main function is to criticize. Yeah. Because you know what I mean? It's like if they don't have something to complain about or critique, then they don't have anything to talk about because nobody wants to hear how great the new Fuente cigar was. They just they like to hear them bitch and moan and complain. And it's the mm. same like four or five guys. So and it's like we we experienced that a little bit. Like when we were doing our interviews, we kind of crossed paths with another company that uh just reviewed cigars and yeah. Like, I know when I'm getting looked at, like, I'm white trash, and that's how I felt like this dude was looking at me, and I wanted to be like, really? dog, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, oh, man, yeah, I it, was, it was, it was, it was pretty weird. Like, really? Yeah, it would definitely cause some weird looks from, a, like, a couple people. It was, and like, weird. We're doing our interviews. Anybody, and anybody I would know personally? I don't know. We'll we'll have this conversation. Off yeah, we'll air. do it off air. All right, all right, all right. All right cool. Man, but, I was totally well, unaware of all this. Was this during an interview or something like that? Yes, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, you were busy. So you were talking, and me and Jerry caught it, and I'm looking. I'm like, I'm like, I'm getting the dirtiest look from someone. I'm like, all right, I know I don't fucking like. Maybe I'm just a little here, but I want to like just the way this dude's looking at me. I want to smack him in the face. Like that's how like. I mean, Jesus. Like I'm looking like the guys looking at me like I have AIDS. I mean, I could have been saying weird. some. I could have been saying some messed up shit. So maybe, maybe that was. Called but for. we're having fun and talking to people yeah. about their lives. We're being funny and like everyone hears about, like you said, the wrapper binder filler. Like, there's a yeah. million websites that will tell you that exact thing. Like, they don't need to hear that from John Huber or anyone else we're talking to when they can read that themselves if that's what they're interested in. Like, agreed, hundred percent. Our goal 100%. is to you're, highlight you're, the people. So just to elaborate a little bit more on why I think it was a mistake. To move to March. I mean, ever since I've been in this industry and for years before I got into the industry, that show has been in July. And what happens is, you know, across the map, the first quarter of the year is always slow in retail for cigars because you guys know more than anybody. It's cold. Nobody's outside smoking cigar for the most part, right? Unless you're in Arizona, California, whatever. So Q1 is always slow. 
So what happens? So April comes around, golf comes in, and people are outside enjoying. So you got April, May, June. These guys build up a little bit of cash. They go take the retail cash to the desert in July, PCA, and they take advantage of the show deals. So what happens when you move that to March? Oh, you got people coming out to Vegas, and they're all going, yeah, it looks really good. I'll bring it in at some point this time this year, but I don't have any money. I just have it's We have no business. We have no money. That's exactly what happened. And a lot of guys will tell you, oh, we had the best show ever. And, you know, that's you hear that all the time. But I'm being completely transparent from our experience. It was a mistake. And it's just it make, it goes to make sense. It's just kind of like, you know, I heard even the big guys. And when I say the big guys, you know who the big guys are. Yeah, We're mm-hmm. down 30, 30 and 40 percent. Wow. And that's a real number. That's, that's a real number. Oh, I mean, you're, you're so, pretty informed on that. So I'll take your word for it. Uh, yeah, I just... You know, they kind of sold us all on a bill of goods. Like, oh, it's it's going to be nicer weather. No, it's not. It was cold as balls for us. Like, nobody was, there was no pool time or whatever. And honestly, the weather is not of consequence because you're stuck in the convention center from 10 to 6 every day. So it could be snowing out or it could be 120. It doesn't matter. You're in the climate-controlled environment. That's what and I always I tell think- the guys when we first get there. I'm like, if we're going to do anything, we're going to the pool, you have one day. It's... Yeah. Before that pre-party, and if you don't do anything before that pre-party, you are not you're not going to any pools. The pools close at five. We all know that there. Right. Uh, you're not doing anything like that. So if you like to gamble, that's about the only option you have at the end of the show. Yeah. After you have dinner, after you fucking take your shoes off and fucking throw them up on a bed for fucking at least an hour and a half to just chill out for a minute, you know, like, and then by the what? time you're done eating and and relaxing for an hour, it's fucking ten o'clock. Did you guys get good meals in while you were there? We yeah. did have one. Yeah, uh, we did. Did you? We did. I don't remember the name of the Wally's. place. Wally's. Yeah, Wally's. It was in the resort world where we stayed. Uh, okay. <coughs> I got like a nice little Wagyu steak, and I was big. I was happy with it. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, we had all this. My wife had made all these reservations for us to go eat. My wife and daughter were with me, obviously. And um, it was just like, I think... We went out one night. The other nights, I'd get back to the sh- from the show, and they were just both exhausted. Like, we're too tired. Let's just order in. And so we just – I think, remember one night we did Postmates, and I had um, Uncle Polly's. You ever heard of that deli, Uncle Polly's? No. no. So they started, like, in Queens or whatever, and it, it kind of caught on. Pete, Pete Davidson used to wear the Uncle Polly's hat all the time on every talk show or whatever. Anyway, I so always wanted to try Uncle Polly's. They just opened in Vegas. So, like, I ordered a deli sandwich. It was, like, mozzarella – uh, and this was a basic sandwich. It was good, but it was just basic. And the girls each had like salads, and then we had a couple of sodas. And it was like 120 bucks. Oh, oh I'd be <laughs> I was like, what? Welcome to Vegas, right. bro. That's like, crazier than our Wally's bill, for sure. Well, no, like, I, I listen, mean, I, I'll be the first to admit, I drove that bill up a lot. <laughs> I got a, I was like, you know what? I'm in a Vegas. Couple babies? No, I got Not like even. a $100 steak. Like, I was like, oh, I geez. want that. Me and Jerry okay. just got like the Wagyu burgers. I gotta say, like the best burger of my life, but totally worth it for sure. And and then our buddy ordered an order of fries. Yeah, <laughs> and that was all I had. We're eating these like hundred dollar steaks and like fifty dollar burgers, and this dude fucking he orders a side of fries. So. Hops over the fence just to smoke a yeah. cigar so he doesn't get yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I'm one of those guys. Like, if I'm eating out, I want to eat something I'm not going to be able to have at home, and like. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not going to make a Wagyu steak at home because if I fuck it up, I'm going to be so mad at myself. All right. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, all right, this is the most tender meat you can possibly get. And mm. now I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> I am too. I haven't eaten lunch. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. We didn't really, we didn't venture out too much. We we ate, uh, we actually stayed at an Airbnb. Oh, my so you did it right. You were. And, well, she hooked up this great spot in Palm's Place, which is next to the Palm's Casino Resort. And um, the guy that owned the unit was a chef in Vegas. And so he would turn us on to all like, the local spots. And so we actually got, took advantage of one. And it was called uh, China Poblano. And it was a Mexican-Chinese fusion, which sounds terrible. But when you get there, the food was so good. Oh, my God. I ate so much. It was ridiculous. It actually doesn't sound that, bad. That, was sounds, like, oh, that sounds it, like... It wasn't like the mix. It was like the left side of the menu was Mexican. <laughs> the right side of the menu was Chinese. That sounds That's, like me drunk at 4 a.m., like going to KFC know, right? Taco Bell. 
<laughs> like exactly. I, I, this is great. I want all of it. Sounds like <laughs> sounds like our food court at the hotel. You could get like the Mexican place, no, or you get Chinese, and just mix it oh, together. Yeah, you all close up circuit time. You're hot and ready to go, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. We're doing so it live. Much. Good to meet you too, Derek. Take yeah. care. John, I got a question I'm for back. you. This is yes, a uh, cigar-related question. I've been meaning to ask a couple people this question. We always get caught up in conversation, but when you come up with an idea, such as like Coronetta or anything in your line that you do, what comes first, the idea in your head or the tobacco that you're looking at to produce? So do you see like a whole bunch of tobacco when you're out at a factory and you're like, I got the tobacco, mm-hmm. I got to come up with an idea, or is the idea in your head first and then you got to find the tobacco? So how does that work? It can go both ways. Um, like, for instance, I remember when we did, I believe it was a TAA, the Angels Anvil 2023, that started with the tobacco. Like, Ernie showed me a hand, and he's, and I said, what is that? And he said, this is like Sumatra hybrid that I've been, you know, looking at. And how much do you have? What's the yield? And so we, we worked around that to create that particular cigar. Um, but with Cornetta, it was basically Raul Diesel just sending me a blend that I asked him, I said, create something that's reminiscent to this. Give me your version of this. And it's, I mean, I didn't have to change a thing. I know it was boom. And then I had to go back and figure out, okay, what can I do with it? Uh, what can I use it for? And that's when I came up with Coronetta. But it can start with the tobacco. It can start with the blend. It could very seldom does it start with like the idea. Um, Headley Grange would be the exception to that back in 2012, 13. I had this idea that I wanted to create this cigar that tasted the way these drums sound on this Led Zeppelin track, which sounds really crazy and everybody thought I was crazy. But when I pitched it to Ernesto and I played the the six second loop of the drums, and it was like this thick, echo, dense plotting. I said, that's what I wanted to feel like in the mouth. And he's like, oh, okay, I got it. And that's how we started working on the blend that became Heavenly Grange. So it can go, it can go different ways. It's just right. it's never, you know, Step one, step two, step three. It's always oh, so. It's a, a choose your own story, if you will. Uh, I've done it always, to yeah. be honest with you. So pretty much. So we have a few things coming up, right? Obviously, with Crown Heads, uh, Las Calaveras twenty four, right? Yes. Uh, Excited. Mule kick. Uh, I didn't even hear about it yet this year. That one's kind of like on the TBD. Okay. That is t- to be determined. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I might take the year off on that one. Well, I, um, I just, yeah, I mean, a, as you can see, I, I, I like, I like kind of just throwing all the boxes up. You know, I just, I, I want to see how high it could get. I want to see how many fucking countries' go. flags <laughs> I can get up there. There you go. Yeah, I might, might take a breather on that one. But there's a couple more things I got planned oh. um, for 24. But the next one that's really on the docket is is Calaveras. I mean, that's, man, that's always been my baby. And then, obviously, you got the blood medicine going reg production. Blood medicine is not regular production. It's an LE. We're only doing 18,000 cigars in a 6x52 Toro. But that is actually leaving the factory in Esteli on the 22nd. So we'll have it by the end of the month, but you probably won't see it on the shelf until the first part of May. What can you tell the audience? And obviously, you know, being a sponsor of the show, what can what can our uh, what can our listeners expect out of the Las Calaveras this year? What can you tell us without giving it away? I mean, a typical Garcia product, you know, just full flavor, flavor forward, um, spice rich, balance, complexity. I just love the way that they make cigars, man. I really do. What I color say- is the band? And you'll never guess that one. Oh. You'll never guess that. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> what color is the band? You won't get it out of John. You, you will not guess it. You it is not a primary color. I will tell you that. Wait and so, see. Wait and see. Now, is this going to be like? Uh, is this edition a your like redo of any of the prior years? Because I know like okay, so this is a whole new blend. Everything. Everything's been different. Like even okay. if you see on paper, it says Habano, you know, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. I mean. That's as much detail as I get from Jaime or anybody at the Garcia camp. They won't go into the whole, all right, you got this Seiko from here. You got this Viso from here. You got a double, but they don't okay. give me the breakdown. So Cause you'll see, always, the blend always is altered every year. That's okay. the whole idea. Because you'll see people comment, say like, oh, like the, the 16 was the same as the 14. I'm like, well, no, 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 the, no, no. I know the Imperiosa was the. <clears throat> uh, the Imperiosa is the blend of the 14. Yes. 
but and like, that, that is facts. But um, other than that, we haven't repeated a blend anywhere. We, I mean, the 16 used a broadleaf wrapper, and then we did that again in 23. But the binder filler components, I mean, there's an infinite amount of combinations you can do. So I just kind of like leave that up to Jaime. I will tell you this, though, that the, the actual blend, my first choice, my first round draft pick for the blend, I didn't get to use. And uh, it's just kind of a funny story, but we were working on some, something else and Calabaris was there and I had narrowed it down to two, two ways. And this one way that I wanted to go with, it was, I'll just full disclosure, it was using a Corojo wrapper. And I'm like, that's, this is the one I'm going to use Corojo. Da, 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 da. And Mike kept pushing back on, well, don't, don't do anything yet. Let's work on this component. Let's do it. You know, all this stuff. I'm like, Hey, you know, or shit or get off the pot. We got to get going on this thing, man. Cause usually we put the PO in by January blends, you know, decided in Q4 the previous year. So we were behind and with the PCA coming right around the corner that took, you know, obviously took priority. So anyway, um, I finally got the green light and I go, go to, uh, Yanni Garcia, Pete's wife. And I said, Hey, Yanni, I said, you know, I'm ready to put the PO in for 24. Let's get going. Um, and I told her I wanted to use Corolla. Well, Three days before that, I see this email come up on, or this story come up, Cigar Aficionado magazine, about Nick Melillo moving into my father's cigars and he's doing a wise man Corojo and a wise man Matero. And I'm like, fuck, I go, there goes my Corojo. And sure enough, Yanni gets back and she's like, she goes, you know, everything's great. She goes, the only thing we can't do is a Corojo. And I just wrote her back. I'm like, Nick, right? And she just wrote back, you know, like, ha, ha, ha. And she's like, but why did you wait so long? You could have had it. And I'm like, don't even get me started. I was just like, <laughs> the, so, and I saw Nick, I saw Nick at the show and he gave me a big hug. We had a laugh about it. I'm like, dude, you got my freaking crow. But, yeah. Did you like that comment on there about Which like, comment? uh, the, you post the picture and you're like, uh, what can you comment about this picture? And I wrote Nick, is, oh, Nick is, I wrote Nick is like telling you how to find black market stuff for your, for your next pick. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, I love that guy, man. Oh, he's a good guy to talk to. We talk on the regular and um, just, I mean, you know, I I think people read a little bit into that. Like we would do a collaboration. It's like, but you know, Nick doesn't need me to help him blend cigars. That's for damn sure. Hey, boy. The 22 used a Corojo, didn't it? All Nicaraguan. The teal band. Question. It may have. It may have used a Corolla. <laughs> my what? favorite rapper still to work with, whether it's Calaveras or not, is Havana. Havana is just my thing. Spicy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, hold on. Geo. Lighter. 74, I believe. So 26 and 24, 40. And you Oh, no, no, no. That's probably maybe 15 to 20. A little moment of silence. This is what... This For is, OJ. This is what doing it live is all about. This is what you get. This is what I like. It's real. Thank you. On a cigar number two for me, by the way. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. I think so. I don't know. Big dog. Breaking out the... Holy shit. You must have money. I actually got these. <laughs> Package deals. <laughs> I, I know a guy. He might be on the pod right now. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, you got the guy on. You got My man's see. doing an invoice right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Appreciate you. All right. It's a service Isn't call. time to go buy a $70,000 whatever it was that you got. We got to get... We got like five minutes, and then we got a the roll. Hellcat. The yeah. Hellcat. Well, you are got... you gonna buy it for real or what, <sighs> John? I don't know. I'm very impulsive, like badly impulsive. Really? Sometimes I can't say no. I can't... That's a big commit. So, Man. let me tell you, they're how... not making them anymore. It's my dream car. It's a couple years old. It's not brand new, but it's still seventy, seventy k, sixty six used. Yeah. John, you don't understand how Jerry is like friggin' Sir Louie posted a picture of 
OG like Franks from Tatuai, and this guy was like trying to buy the box even though it was absurdly priced. Oh yeah, like I have a disease. Some of that stuff, that secondary market's crazy, man. I don't want I the fucking cigars. Told- I don't care about the cigars. You just want the dress box. I want the box. <laughs> I have every I have every single one of them except the Franks. When he did. He did the dress box for the mummy, I think. I think it was. Maybe it was a drac. It was something that was shaped like a coffin, and mm-hmm. my wife, Laura, really wanted it. So I'm like, I'll probably get it for you. So I, I texted Pete, <laughs> and he gave me one of these. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of you. And, it was just, and I've known him since freaking 96. <laughs> I never got it. <laughs> so don't feel bad. I'm just trying to get him on for an hour interview. <laughs> I'm going to take care of that. I, I, I will take care of that for sure. Yeah, I only spent about three to $5,000 a year on his products. Yeah, I just want a one, one hour interview with the guy. Hey, man, let's talk about 20 years of Tatsuwahe. Oh, Crickets. Boys, I got to run. I can, I can carry this on into the car if you want. Ah, you're good, John. Am I good? You're, you're good, good, bro. We it was, it was nice talking right. to you, brother. Before you leave, it's nice chatting. Yeah, enjoying the Habano, really am. Just I know you wanted right. to hear what we thought around about. around the table, real quick, real quick. One to one hundred, rate it. Go. I got it right now at a ninety. Okay, keep going. Uh, <clears throat> Geo, I have to ballpark it, but I'd probably be similar, like 90, 91. <clears throat> okay, Caleb, I'm at an eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. You suck. All right, on that note. <laughs> I had a, I had an issue. I had an issue. And then he lit up we, a lavaretta. Yeah, but now I'm doing a lavaretta, so. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. God bless, boys. You too, brother. Talk to you soon. See you, John. John <laughs> as always, Hopefully brother. Hopefully be healthy next time. All yeah, right, no yeah, doubt. Heal, heal up. All right, adios. See you, brother. All right, all right bye-bye. Bye. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Oh, got to leave that open. John right? Huber. Hopefully, Hopefully he left that open. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Right. Yeah. He knows He's usually goes. good. All right. And if he didn't, I'm sure we can just make him and just tell him, hey, it's nice when you have these guys' personal numbers. It makes it a lot easier. That helps. Uh, That being said, we have a segment to get into. Man, I guess we just did our cigar review there really quickly, too. No, we did. I mean, it was fast, but I mean, like, we can kind of go over it and we could talk on it. It's no big deal. All right. Uh, Yes, we do have a segment to get to. It is time for Patrol Gone Wild, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, makers of fine cigars such as Mikadilla, Sin Compromiso, Sober Mesa, and many others. With that being said, Patrol Gone Wild, we're doing it big. All right, up first, this is a story out of California. We have a man arrested for allegedly taking a leg of a person hit by a train and eating it in broad daylight. (laughs) Yes, you heard that correctly. Uh, There's been horrific footage taken from a scene of an Amtrak station crash. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. Police in California have arrested a 27-year-old man accused of taking a leg of a person who was hit by a train uh, away from the scene and eating it. Uh, officers arrested Resnado Tellez uh, on Friday, March 22nd, when a pedestrian was struck by a train at the Amtrak station on the 700 block of G Street in Wasco, California. And obviously, he took the leg and was seen taking bites of it. Obviously, uh, footage of this has all been blurred out. Pictures have been blurred out as well. So one person died when they were hit by the train. Uh, the name of the victim will not be released. But yes, a homeless man found the leg, walked away from the scene, and was photographed and videoed eating parts of the leg. Um, a witness to the scene can be a uh, witness on the scene said, "Yeah, the man continued to walk down the street with the leg and was chewing on it. Uh, bones could be seen at all. You could see the bones. That's disgusting." Uh, um, skin was literally hanging, fucking everything. disgusting. So seeing severed limbs is always gross because it looks like meat, like but not like appetizing. Yeah, meat. but sometimes you see the limbs and you're like, it looks like a fucking Halloween prop. It doesn't even look real. <laughs> well, this was a real limb, <sighs> dude. Eaten that's... by this homeless guy. Yeah, uh, could you? This poor person's family. Like, oh god. What do you even do there? Like, can I ask you a question? Do you think this man has a family? He's hanging out on the railroad tracks. I mean, fair. Or just someone crossing the street at the wrong time, wrong place. I don't know. Let's be real here. Uh, uh, Let's get real here. Only uh, vagabonds hang around railroad tracks. False. We smoke cigars by the railroad tracks all the time. Well, you're in a police. We car, used to. Probably. Used to. Yeah. Now we're not allowed to. Smoke you're not in the like. Cars. You're not just sitting there on the train tracks. You and your friends. Like, what was that movie where they find the dead body? 
the kids and they're walking on train stand tracks. Stand by me. Yeah, it's not stand by me where you're just kids walking on the railroad tracks. So the guy who was found eating the leg, he uh, is being tried with a misdemeanor crime for uh, tampering with evidence. Tampering with evidence. Uh, a term they could face six months in county jail and fines up to a thousand dollars. So uh, that's and it, it. it he won't. Where did this happen? California. Oh no, he, he won't. He's he, back. They're uh, gonna actually offer him a second leg. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna. I was just gonna say he's back on the street searching for more body parts to eat. Like we have a great position for you here at the city morgue for these unclaimed bodies. <laughs> uh, that's a real definition to street meat. And, oh, uh, that's disgusting. Ew. And, and instead of bone apple teat, it's a uh, bone apple tits. As some people would say in the food industry, bone being the keyword. <laughs> All right, and we'll let Geo go to the next story for Patrol Gone Wild. So, the one that I mean, by most people's standards, yes, she would be a grandma, but she was a mom in this case here. So I'm gonna read this headline out the New York Post, and this woman gets the badass of the fucking year award for me. Heroic mom, 85, kills mask intruder in gunfight, protecting disabled son while handcuffed to a chair and shot four times. It's legend. She's a legend. So this scumbag breaks into this woman's home, right? Cuffs her to a chair, like trying to get the valuables. Apparently there's two safes downstairs. Uh, He goes downstairs to try and fuck with the shit. She drags the chair, gets her 357. When the dude comes back up, lets off rounds into this dude. Call an ambulance, but not for me. Well, no, he shot. Well, no, definitely call one for her because he shot her. And he punched her and she was bleeding all over the place. So this woman got fucked up. She got shot four times. Like, God, lived, lived after laying on her kitchen floor wounded for 10 hours. While her disabled son was sleeping upstairs. He did not hear those gunshots. He's disabled. (laughs) I'm just saying. Well, could have been could have been deaf. Yeah. Like, first off, this is why... <laughs> I didn't think about that one. Right to bear arms is important. It's the ultimate fucking equalizer. But that is fucking crazy. And she lived after she got medical attention. She was there until about 12 p.m. the next morning when this all started at, like... Two in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So almost eight hours before she got medical attention, just sitting there with bullet holes in her at 85 fucking years old. Some would say that's knocking on death's door, just being that old alone, but damn. She was the Grim Reaper that night. What do you think of that, Jer? It's It's an evil world we live in. (laughs) Thank you, future. (laughs) It is an evil world we live in. Justice. That's justice. Street justice. justice. Served. Served up righteously. Geo's dying. John Huber's dying. Everyone's dying. Not me. Not me. Not me. I'm still kicking. And I got another story for you. I got a video clip. This is death by Taco Bell. Or death because of Taco Bell. So uh, we'll let the clip play. This is out of Detroit. This home may look peaceful, but on Wednesday night, police say it was anything but. There was a murder over Taco Bell. A 72-year-old man is dead. His roommate behind bars. Oh, God, it scared the hell out of me. It really did. Sorry. There's blood all over upstairs. Bob and Larry can't yeah. believe it. Police say their roommate, 72-year-old <laughs> Dale Mitchell, was beaten to death by their other roommate, 54-year-old Mark Newsom. He's charged with second-degree murder. They say it stemmed when Mark accused Dale of stealing his Taco Bell. To think that uh fight over food would escalate to murder you know i mean it's inconceivable bob and larry say they were both trying to sleep when the fight broke out at their boarding home off waldorf street in roseville i heard a kabang it like a dresser was being thrown down kabang voices why are you doing this why are you doing this leave me alone and um quit please quit and that's what i heard it's just senseless i uh trusted uh mark as my friend i could never believe that he would have done something like that if we've come to grips with life about fighting and killing somebody over a taco or food itself there's got to be more to life than that let me t- <clears throat> let me tell you this right now. Plot twist: Bob definitely stole that fucking taco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Larry, I think. Larry's a suspicious Larry, cat. <laughs> Larry. Uh, Poor Dale. Guy. Uh, so uh, Newsom, killed him. The, the, the murderer is being charged with second degree murder, a life felony. So, uh, yeah, he should have just walked away. Life would have been a lot easier. Uh, All the more importance of having roommates that don't eat your food. This is what I was just talking about, man. I'm telling you. You got to find a guy who just doesn't like to eat shit. Life comes at you full circle sometimes. Uh, extra spicy death sauce by Taco Bell was the cause of murder. Diablo sauce taken to the next level. Uh, sorry for the murder victim, though. I don't mean to joke about it, but yeah. Crazy story over Taco Bell. <laughs> So, guys, tune in next week for another Patrol Gone Wild segment brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. <laughs> How'd you do on your cigar review? Do you want to get into it, actually? I'll actually do a full in-depth review besides just giving it an 88. In-depth? Not death. In, yeah. The shit called no, death. No Taco Bell death uh, in, here in the cigar In-depth. All right. So, this is the Coronetta <clears throat> Habano. We did the uh, Earl size. Uh, nine on the appearance. Nice triple band. I've seen the artwork on this thing. The red, the white, the gold. The crown gets a nine for me. Uh, Burn gave it a nine. No relights at all. Just one light at the beginning. That's it. Uh, construction, the ashes did hold up strong, but here's where I'm knocking it a point or two. Uh, I give it an eight and a half. I had two cracks, and uh, it flaked. The flake on me was my error for letting the ash get too long, not putting it down, and uh, it fell on me. So that was my error. Uh, draw, I went with a punch. Something new for me to the show, but I've been, I've been experimenting with that. On my own, outside of the show, uh, I like the punch. Gave it an eight and a half. Uh, enjoyment. We had John Huber on the show. Gave it a nine. That's a forty-four. You times it by two. It's an eighty-eight. My additional notes: uh, light, creamy cigar, some nutty and mocha notes as well. Uh, I said, enjoy this for breakfast, man. Don't even skip eating breakfast. Just smoke this and have a nice energy <laughs> drink with it. Uh, eighty-eight. Uh, I did have to just knock it because of the cracks, and that, that's it. Uh, if I had got one with no cracks. Probably a higher score. Now, sure. I will note that we had these cigars come from Las Vegas, which is zero humidity and terrible for cigar smokers. So, take that you. I had no cracks. I don't know about you, Jer. So, maybe your kids were just fucking with your cigar collection. My kids. Stored away from the kids. Yeah, yeah. Could have yeah. just been mishandling in the in the luggage bag when we were traveling. Just with you know, we, you had to throw it up in the top cabin, so you know stuff gets mishandled, ma- mangled around. You never know what happens. All right, who's next? Uh, I'll go. Uh, the Coronetta Habano by Crownheads. The appearance I gave it a nine. I really like the triple band on it. Uh, I think it's a very cool looking cigar. Uh, I really like the band on it. Uh, the you know, leaf at the top. It's different. Oh, strawberry leaf john said look at that a strawberry fields forever for the english royalty crowns uh strawberry. burn i gave it a nine i had no problems with the burn very equal nice burn uh didn't really have to touch it up too much uh the construction i knocked it a point uh eight and a half i gave it uh i did have a little bit of a crack it did fix it geo did touch on this we did take these home from las vegas they were brought from nashville or pro- probably Nicaragua to Nashville, Nashville to Vegas, Vegas to Buffalo, and then ended up in our humidors. So, you know what? Whatever. It fixed itself. Draw gave it a nine. Good smoke output. Really good, tasty smoke. Uh, I did like the flavor of the cigar. You touched on it being like a creamy cigar. I thought it was kind of a peppery cigar. Really? Uh, I did get like the mocha notes on it. Uh, I really like the cigar. Uh, 9.5 on the enjoyment. Obviously, having John with us just to hang out and shoot the shit for a little bit. Bring me to a 45.90 overall. Not bad. All right. Mr. Uh, Gloopy G himself. Well, what you got for us, G? All right. The Coronetta Habano. Appearance. I gave it a 9. Uh, box. The bands. They did a nice presentation on this cigar. It really shows. Uh, I mean... Like I said, we know what, oh, what a 10 out of 10 is for, you got to do something special to get that. Nine is, I feel like on our scales, damn near close to a 10. But uh, it's, burn, one, it's one point away from a 10. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> math, just being the math guy here. We don't, we don't give 10s out lightly. Correct. Uh, burn, I gave it a nine. I touched it up like twice. Uh, no issues whatsoever there. Uh, really good smoke. Construction, I am giving this a nine. I had no issues with mine. Uh, not a crack, nothing. But 
who knows it? That's just luck of the draw when you're bringing stuff from Vegas, and that's the only downfall about when we smoke stuff we get from the trade shows is humidity and air pressure can fuck these things up. And then Lord knows where it has happened to them in between before they got into our possession. Mm-hmm. Draw, I also went with the punch. Great smoke output, no issues. Uh, straight cut probably also would be the same issue. I don't know if I'd V-cut this one. It just seemed like it was a little, like, for a round, it wouldn't work too well. But that's just my opinion. Uh, enjoyment. I'm right there with you, Jer. I gave it a 9.5. I always enjoy having a conversation with John. Like, that's a guy that we've come to know pretty well in the industry. And obviously, being able to sit with him at PCA and have, you know, even non-cigar talk, it's a good time. Uh, that brought my overall score to a 45.5, giving me a 91. Nice. Whoa, Gio with a high score here? Gio had the high score. That is an oddity here with Down to Herf. Yeah, I know. C- Caleb's developing that snobby palette. No, so. no, I'm not becoming a snob. Dude, that's like two shows Three. in a row. Three. I've had some Three. issues. You've I've had, had some one. issues. Cracks. A lot of cracks. I've had some issues. Uh, crack kills. Oh, crack kills. Uh, I also I also don't sell crack either, so just putting that out there. Uh, overall score, but 89. you smoke it. Never have. Never will. It might be fun though. What's the overall score? Overall score, eighty nine point six 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 seven. We're gonna round that up to ninety. So ninety overall. There you go, Geo, a ninety for you. Bam. Just like that. Bum bum bum. Did it? Any closing notes of the episode here, Steenie? Guys, check out Crown Heads, man. Give uh, Jake, give John, give Miguel, give them all follows. Just follow Crown Heads in general. Uh, and as always, make sure you're following us on the YouTube. We have the Facebook as well. We have the Instagram. Just follow everything. Uh, keep the comments up. We want to see more funny comments. I appreciate the comments, guys. Appreciate the likes, the love, but I want to see some funny comments. So uh, get to the comments. And guys, make sure you're subscribing to our Patreon. Like By the time this Ooh. airs, the giveaway will all be already be announced. But we do that twice a year. And the amount of shit you get more than pays for your membership for the year. So subscribe to the Patreon, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram. And if you're listening to us audio only, be sure to do it on a Cigar Hustlers Podcast Network. The number one cigar network on Pod Bean. Boom. Robot. M- monotone. E. Boobot. Beep. That being said, uh, thanks for joining us this week, guys. We will see you next Wednesday. Uh, I'm not sure we have planned, but uh, you never know. It could be something cool. It could be the three of us jerking each other off. Who the hell knows? But uh, that being said, we'll see you guys next Wednesday. And peace out, y'all. Peace in. Peace in.